Thaddeus Stevens was born in Danville, Vermont, on April 4th, 1792. He was the second of four boys, and was born with a club foot like his older brother Joshua. In the late 1700s, physical deformity was seen as a mark of the devil, a sign from God that the family had committed some secret sin, and the family was ridiculed and shunned. The family lived in abject poverty on a small farm. Joshua Stevens, their father, was an alcoholic and an abusive man. By the time Thaddeus was 12, his father had abandoned the family and was later killed in the War of 1812. Sarah Stevens, a kind woman, had great energy, a strong will, and was deeply religious. She held the family together by working day and night. Thaddeus loved his mother and was devoted to her throughout his life. Sarah realized that the only hope for her eldest two sons was education. Eventually, Sarah scraped together enough money to enroll them in the nearby Peacham School. Thaddeus was poor, frail, limped severely, and as a result was taunted mercilessly by other children. Because of this, he was very shy and extremely sensitive. Oh, you're early, Thaddeus. Thaddeus, would you step up now, please, and read number four? A loud, clear voice now. Good evening, returned the old man, raising himself up for his work. However, he excelled in school, and it quickly became obvious he had great intelligence and a special aptitude for debating. Well read, Matt. Well read. Thank you. You may sit down. Would you add, please, 484 and 229? Upon graduation, he was accepted at Dartmouth College, where he was again an outcast among his rich classmates. After graduation from Dartmouth, he accepted a teaching position at a one-room school in York, Pennsylvania. He studied law in the evenings and passed the bar exam in a year and set up practice in Gettysburg, later moving to Lancaster. May it please the court. I am Thaddeus Stevens, counselor in this most critically important case. In his first year, he argued Ten cases before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, winning nine, an unprecedented feat. Thaddeus appeared to be an overnight success. Word of his ability and success spread, and he was inundated with clients and eventually attained modest wealth. He purchased a 250-acre farm for his mother, which was to bring him the greatest satisfaction of his life. Stevens never forgot his childhood poverty, and his philanthropy became legendary. He could not bear to see suffering if his money or legal aid could relieve it. He had standing orders with his physician and cobbler to treat all deformed and disabled children at his expense. At the time of his death, he had over $100,000 in notes from individuals to whom he had lent money and never been repaid. In 1833, Stevens was elected to the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. In 1830s America, there were practically no free public schools. When a free school bill was introduced in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, Stevens became an ardent crusader, along with Governor Wolf, to get the legislation passed. There was a public outcry because of the expected cost, and the repeal bill passed the Senate and went on to the Pennsylvania House. Stevens rose to defend the original bill to a standing room only crowd. We shall cast our votes that the blessing of education shall be conferred on every son of Pennsylvania, shall be carried home to the poorest child of the poorest inhabitants of the meanest hut of your mountains, so that even he may be prepared to act well he explained how a state system of free schools was more efficient and less costly than the existing private system. Which goes on increasing through increasing 
Eternity. Before he finished speaking, the entire assembly rose to cheer Stevens and then went on to pass a stronger Free School Act for Pennsylvania, ahead of most of the country. Stevens is known as the savior of free public education in Pennsylvania. Stevens was elected to the United States House of Representatives from 1849 to 1853 and from 1859 until his death in 1868. We have turned or are about to turn loose four million slaves without a hut to shelter them or a cent in their pockets. His goals were the abolition of slavery, full legal rights, irrespective of race, and he wanted to empower African Americans after the Civil War. If we leave them up to the legislation of their late masters, we had better have left them in bondage. His legacy today is his major contributions to the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution, which he guided through Congress. Stevens did not live to see the passage of the 15th Amendment. However, most historians would agree his crusading inspired his passage. It guaranteed all male citizens the right to vote. Thaddeus Stevens died at midnight on August the 11th, 1868, at age 76. The public expression of grief in Washington was second only to Abraham Lincoln's. His coffin lay in state at the Capitol Rotunda flanked by a black Union honor guard from Massachusetts. Later, 20,000 people attended his funeral in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Stevens dreamed of a socially just world where unearned privilege did not exist. He understood from his own personal experience that being different could enrich society. He knew that differences among people should not be feared or oppressed but celebrated. In his will, he left $50,000 to establish a school for the relief and refuge of homeless, indigent orphans. This original bequest has evolved into Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. His will stated, They shall be carefully educated in the various branches of English education and all industrial trades and pursuits. No preferences shall be shown on account of race or color in their admission or treatment. Neither poor Germans, Irish, or Mahometan, nor any other on account of their race or religion of their parents shall be excluded. They shall be fed at the same table. Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology is a living monument to its founder's legacy. As such, the college continually strives to provide underprivileged individuals with opportunities and to create an environment in which individual differences are valued and nurtured. Thaddeus Stevens' spirit lives on through this unique school.